Hey everyone, this is Paul and welcome back to Intro to DJing. In this video, what I want to do is show you two emergency exit transitions, reverb out and echo out. Now, emergency exit transitions are not the types of transitions you're going to want to do all the time when you're beat matching songs, but they are useful maybe a couple times throughout a gig when you want to really quickly go from one genre to another or one BPM to another. So for instance, say you're playing a song and you realize very quickly this song isn't going over well, you're losing the crowd, you want to go ahead and switch directions, that can be a good time to use an emergency exit transition. Or likewise, if the promoter comes up and says, hey, we got this big spender in here, they want to hear some hip hop right now, you know, play something like that. This will allow you to very quickly change directions and play something like that. What we're gonna be doing is using the effects unit in Traktor. There are two ways to do this. One is using the mixer effect and the other is using the effects section. The easiest way is just using the mixer effect, which we can just select here. So what I'm gonna do is practice going from this EDM track at 138 beats per minute. Go ahead and turn this up so you can hear it. to this track here at 132, or really at 66 beats per minute, halftime R&B type of track. So the first way to do this is basically to select the reverb unit here on my effects unit rather than the filter. If this isn't showing up for you, what you can do is go to your settings, go to the mixer section and for your mixer sex effects, basically be sure you have reverb or and maybe dual delay is good. There's also dotted delay, that's fine too, but I like reverb and dual delay. And all we're simply going to do is turn this knob clockwise, cut the fader and press play on the next song. This will not only apply the effect more as we increase this knob, but it will apply it post fader, which means as I cut this, it will basically wash over. So take a listen to what happens. So that's the way to use the reverb. You can turn it counterclockwise as well, but this just makes the sound sound a lot darker. So I prefer turning it clockwise, but you can also do it this way. I'm not as big of a fan of that, which is why I like turning it this way. This applies a high pass filter. This applies a low pass filter, just like the filter knob, except it also applies that reverb. That's the reverb out. The delay out or the echo out is just using something like the dual delay or the dotted delay. And it sounds similar. Once again, same thing. We're gonna twist this to the right and then cut the fader. So that's how you would do that. Once again, what we're doing is using the tail of this sound to wash over and smooth over that transition going from one to the other. If we didn't do that, it would basically sound very abrupt. Once again, not as smooth. So what we're doing is using that tail to basically create a natural echo out point and then starting the next track. Now that's all fine and good using the mixer effects, but we can also use the global effects here in Traktor as well. It's a little bit more complicated, but it's good to know how to do this as well. So to set this up, we're going to go to settings. And what I'm going to do under my global settings is show the global effects section. What that's going to allow me to do is see effects and effects. Now there's two or four effects unit, depending on how many you use. I tend to use two of the effects units and I tend to use them in this group mode where you get three different effects. But for this, I think it's more, it's basically more easy to see what I'm doing if I sent these both to single. And the last thing that's really important is we set these effects to be post fader. If they're on insert mode, which they are by default, what happens is as I apply the effect, so say I'm playing the track, and I cut the fader, I don't get the tail. It means the effect is applied before the fader, like pre-fader, versus post-fader means it's applied after the fader. And this post-fader is what's going to allow us to do the echo out type of effect. <music> 
like that. So basically that's the way we're going to do it. There are five steps that go into doing an echo or a reverb out. Let me do the reverb out first. The first step is make sure your dry wet is down all the way. You also wanna make sure your effects are routed to the correct deck. Now, the way I do it in Tractor is I have deck A mapped to effects one, which means this deck will be going through this effect and deck B will be going through effect two. But of course you can actually change the routing. You can have them going through both or you can switch which one it is. I just find it easier this way because then you always know the effect that's applied to this deck is the one that's above the deck that you're using and you just turn on the one for the song you're trying to mix out of. But once again, because it's so flexible, it can be very confusing. So this is the way I do it. Once again, find a system that works well for you. The way we're gonna do this is step number one, we're gonna make sure the effect is pre-routed and the dry wet is down before turning it on. So step one is just, you know, make sure we're applying the effect. If I'm mixing out of this track to this one, we're gonna make sure effect is only applied to this deck that I'm mixing out of, not applied to this deck, and the dry wet is down. Step number two, we're going to turn on the effect, which shouldn't do anything because we have the effect turned down all the way. Step number three, we're going to increase the dry wet all the way to maximum. Step number four, we're going to cut the fader. Once again, if, as long as this is in post fader and I have no reason to ever set this to pre fader, this is going to cause there to be a tail that watches over. And then lastly, what you're gonna do is press play on the other track where you want to mix in or start it. So by following these steps, we can get this nice echo out. However, we also wanna set up this effect so that we get as big of a tail as possible. So what I'm gonna do is really increase the size of this reverb. So let's take a listen and find a size that works well. So I'm gonna turn this on to 100% wet and just try to find a good size. That's what I'm looking for. So let's go ahead and do this. I'll walk you through each of the steps and we'll go ahead and do this as a reverb out transition. So step one, make sure dry wet is down and effects is routed. Step two, turn on our effect. Step three, increase our dry wet knob. Step four, cut the fader. And five. Press play on our other track. Now I did this kind of slow, but of course there's a better way to do this. You can once again, just basically do this very quickly and you get the same effect. It's a lot more natural. So let me go ahead and try doing it this way. I'll do it without walking through the steps. A lot more natural. The other option is you can also use this freeze button, which basically does exactly what it sounds. It creates this nice big freeze effect. Basically does that echo out for you, which is really nice without you needing to do anything. So basically what it does is it just stops the track from playing underneath it. But be sure you turn this off because what can happen is you're playing the track and now you wanna come back in and it's because that freeze is on that you can't hear anything even when the effect is turned off. So it can be really helpful. Be sure you turn the freeze off. Don't forget to do that if you're using freeze, but you can also of course just do it with the fader as well. The other way to do this is we're gonna do the same process except this time we're going to use the delay. You can use there's multiple delays, but I just like using this delay. Same with the reverb. There's ice verb and you know reverb T3 and all these different things. But same thing for the delay. We're going to do the same thing. Once again, we want to increase this feedback because this controls the number of delays that we have. We don't want it to be too short. like that, so let's go ahead and take a listen. This is the echo out. So step one, make sure the dry wet is down and the effect is routed correctly. Step two, turn the effect on. Step three, increase the dry wet. 
Step four, cut the fader. And step five, play the track from its start point. Like so. Lastly, be sure to turn the effect off because what can happen, you can be playing this track and wanting to mix in. It's very easy to forget that your delay is on. So be sure to turn it off when you're done, once you're done with the transition. I can't tell you how many times I've forgotten to turn it off. Hopefully it becomes a habit. So now what I'm gonna do is basically do the same thing, except I'm going to do it in reverse. I'm gonna be going from this track back into this track. And this time I'm going to use the delay Maybe I'll use the delay T3, and I'm gonna use the freeze mode, which once again will keep me from having to cut the fader. That's a nice feature in Tractor that most other DJ programs don't have. So let's go ahead and do this. I'm gonna set the crossfader to the middle so I don't have to be playing around with this as I am trying to do this transition. So once again, we've routed our effect, turn it on. You can do it that way. Now for these sort of long delays, I like just using the normal delay, not the T3, but of course you can do either one. And notice here, I need to of course set this effect to post fader for this to work. That freeze can be pretty strong, so sometimes for this it makes more sense to just simply increase the feedback and not use the free. A lot more smooth than doing this transition just with the fader. So once again, we're using the tails of these to push the other song into the background and start the next track either with the delay or the reverb. So hope you found this helpful and I'll see you in the next video.